Vermont is typically known for its clean air, but this summer wildfires burning north of the border turned our skies into a smoky haze. In this week's Health Watch, Channel 3's Alexander Montgomery explains what's being done to track air quality. Pollutants are already in the air, and for larger cities, wildfire smoke makes an already dirty situation worse. But that's not the case in Vermont, where the air typically trends in the green. What you were seeing in the last couple of weeks with the elevated air quality concentra concentrations was directly related to the wildfires. It was it was not something locally and then having the wildfires, you know, added on top of that. While this feels like a new problem for us, it's something Americans out west have dealt with for years as fires burn in their backyards. Chet Wayland is the EPA Air Quality Assessment Division Director. He says pollutants like this are one of several they watch because of the health effects. You see in wildfires, which are usually fine particulates, and sometimes you can see larger particulates, you know, those have a lot of impact on cardiovascular. They have impacts on respiratory. While there isn't much we can do here about the wildfires burning across the border, there are ways to keep track of what's going on. The government website Air Now breaks down the numerical issue into a color-coded map that tells you just how bad things are. You know, I wouldn't go out jogging on a, on a bad air quality day. Uh, I might take it a little bit easier on that day, depending on what my health situation might be. Improving technology is helping keep better track. Governmental agencies run high-end monitors, but in the last few years, more people are adding smaller-scale sensors in their backyards, which could make a difference in a place like Vermont. A monitor in you know one part of the state may not represent air quality literally two valleys over because something could be different. But with these low-cost sensors showing up and people putting them out there, we can bring those into our network and we can show that data on the fire and smoke map, and it gives us a lot more coverage and a lot more you know kind of local impact, if you will. The cost starts at a couple hundred dollars and goes up from there. Another thing we can do is lessen the harmful emissions in our communities by choosing greener options. Uh, taking mass transportation reduces the number of cars on the road. Uh, you know, taking, you know, trying to plan your, your, your errand trips when you're running around doing shopping so that you don't go out 10 times. It's hard to predict just how long wildfire smoke will create issues for our air quality. Waylon says although we've seen an uptick in wildfires, it varies from year to year. Right now in 2023, we're not seeing as many wildfires in the West at this time of the year, still early in the fire season, but we're seeing a lot more in Canada. So it, it's really not easy to say this is a new normal because it, it may or may not be. But I think the best thing folks can do is be vigilant. And that was Alexander Montgomery reporting. It's recommended that you talk with your doctor about how the air quality will affect your personal health and what you should do to protect yourself.